<coughs> right, let's make a start on doing something with your manuscript. Start by creating a folder on your laptop computer that you can put things into. You put the instructions for the authors for the journal and as you start typing the text it's useful to keep saving the text with a new date because sometimes I find that I type something and then decide oh no that, that I don't like that so I cut it out if you haven't saved it with all of the text there you can't go back and then decide oh maybe it would be useful to put somewhere else because you've overwritten the same file with your latest version so it is useful as you're typing the text to keep saving your changes each day or maybe several times a day if you're spending all day typing and then I will usually uh, put in the same folder all the publications that I am referring to all the references and very often I will put a lot more in there than I actually use because what I will do to start with is just sit down I will use Google I will just search for references that are relevant to my area of science so I will just download a whole load of PDF files assuming that I've got access to them or at least the abstracts if I can't uh, access the whole paper and then I will put them all into this folder and there could be 20, 40, 50 or more publications in there and then I will have a read of the bits that I think might be relevant and then I will put the reference in the text for those that I want to use so all of those publications go in that folder maybe you could put a you could make a subfolder as you put the reference into your manuscript then you put the PDF file into the folder and then also tables and figures as you prepare them maybe if you've got uh, co-authors and they are also contributing to the manuscript maybe they're writing parts of the materials and methods maybe they're doing different aspects of the results section then you may want to keep a record of the email exchanges that you're having and then eventually assuming that the manuscript gets accepted then you would put the the proofs proofs and copies of any emails to the editor and any supplementary documents because electronic supplementary material is now very frequently included in publications so I'm going to describe here a typical research paper and we'll start with the first page which is uh, as Sound of Music says this is the very good place to start choose a title that gives clear information about the content of the research and I've got three different ways of putting together a title one is what you see most frequently which is just a description of what the research is about effectiveness of the organic food supply chain in the Republic of Pontevedra that would be a typical research paper title that is suitable supplying organic food in Ponte, Pontevedro is not a suitable title you can also use a title which has a question so here's an example how effective is the organic food supply chain in the Republic of Pontevedro now in general I prefer using questions not with scientific papers but they are good for posters as I'll be showing you later on today but nevertheless I do see manuscript titles which are in the form of a question 
And the third one is a statement of the findings, of the conclusions of your research. Organic food supply chains in Pontevedra are poorly established. So this again is a perfectly good way of describing the research with the title at the beginning. Think carefully about the author list. Uh -huh. Author list. Difficult. Well, it may be not so difficult for you because you probably won't have too many authors. There was one paper that I published in 2005 which had uh, more than five. Any ideas how many authors I had in that paper that I wrote in 2005? Have a guess. No. No. 20 is getting close. 25 authors' names. Right? <laughs> Ah, oh dear. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I wrote the manuscript. Well, my, my position was that, if you like, I was the brains behind the organization. So, it was my research. I designed the research. I made the genetic resources that we, uh, we worked with. And uh, I actually went out into the field myself to sow seeds. So I actually did grow the plants in some of the environments. But it was summarizing about 10 years. No, it was published in 2000. We started, I started the work in 1991. So it was describing 14 years, well, 13 years plus the time to publish. It was describing 13 years of research that was done with a lot of international collaborations. I had authors in Germany, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Serbia, of course. Um, Italy, did I have Italy? Uh, and we had Spain, authors in Spain. Uh, I, I can't remember, but there were 25 of them. So... Uh, you won't have that problem just yet. But you need to try to identify who are the people who have contributed a, a significant amount to the manuscript itself, either in terms of the, uh, of the concept of the research or the actual carrying out of the research or the analysis of the data, or maybe contributing to putting the manuscript together. In my case, uh, we also have to, uh, I had to include the, uh, as authors, people who had got money for doing research that I was able to contribute to. So I also had authors of um, project proposals as, uh, sorry, writers of project proposals as my authors. So they should have contributed some way to the research. Okay, moving on to the abstract. I, I like writing the abstract at the beginning because it helps me to organize my thoughts. You remember I showed a slide with the two question marks, starting with a question mark and ending up with a question mark. If you look at the abstract first and you try to put that together, that forces you to focus your mind on what the paper is going to be about. It forces you to identify the main points. And in that way, it will, it will help you to write what comes next. Because, you know, this is, oh, this is what I'm going to be writing about. So let's go and do it. Now, there are some journals which require a structured abstract. This is very common in the, uh, in the social sciences and also in the medical sciences. And if it requires a, stru a structured abstract which says introduction, methods, results, interpretation, conclusions, then you just follow those 
guidelines. But if it does not require a structured abstract, you have to remember that your abstract for many scientists is going to be the only text that they will have access to for your paper. So you've got to make sure that what you put in your abstract is going to allow them to understand fully what your research was about and what the main conclusions were. So you've got to try to identify the key results to put information into your abstract so that others will understand what you were doing. Now, uh, for writing a manuscript, it's not so much of a problem. But I do know that very frequently, if you're writing an abstract for a conference, I have read abstracts for conferences which say, results will be presented for. Or results are presented for. Without actually saying what the results are. You've got to make sure that you do give information on the results. Uh, so do not say results are presented for. Right. And you also have to remember that, that most people probably never get beyond the abstract. They will look at the title. That is what will make them look further. The title. Is the title relevant to their interests? Then they will look at the abstract and usually that's all that they will bother to, to refer to unless that paper is right in the heart of their area of research. And then they might want to compare your methods with their methods. They might want to have a look at your tables and figures. But many people will read the abstract and nothing else. So you've got to make sure that in 250 words or whatever the, the word limit is, all the reasons for doing the research and the main conclusions are stated. Uh, note at the bottom I said complete this after you've written the manuscript. Because you can't predict at the beginning exactly the direction that your manuscript is going to take. You've got some idea where you want it to go to get to the happy story with the happy conclusion. But it's only once you've actually written the manuscript that it's there. You know what it is that you wrote. So then you go back and you compare your original abstract with the text that you've now written. And then you update it. You correct it as necessary. Abstract number two. So what goes in? Give a little background. You don't need to say a lot. Perhaps one sentence. You do, however, need to justify why the research was needed. So you've got to provide some sort of a rationale for doing that piece of research. Stating uh, the objectives, for example. Brief description of the research methods or experimental design. And then you identify which of your results are the most important. Because you can't squeeze everything into the abstract. So try to prioritize at the top. This is the most important finding. And then all the other points that you are including in the full text. Then if there's space in the abstract... Okay, then include the second and the third major findings. And then a, a bit of interpretation, maybe what this means for the future. Again, if there are any policy implications or regulations that might be affected. <coughs> 